Hey guys, welcome back to General Chemistry. We're going to switch gears a little bit now, and we're going to start to talk about um, more chemistry-related stuff, maybe not so much math. Um, this chapter is heavy. It's a big chapter for those of you that are following along in my textbook. So I have broken this chapter up into two modules for my online class. Um, so here's just the chapter outline with what we're going to cover. So the first module will be the first half of chapter three. Um, talking about electromagnetic energy and developing eventually something we call the quantum theory. Um, so quantum theory is a pretty heavy topic, um, so it's a natural kind of cutoff. The next module for my online class will be finishing out this chapter, um, but very much related to the things that we've talked about. So we'll talk about electron configurations, talk about um, elemental properties, the periodic table, um, and just introduce some compounds as well. So big, heavy chapter, splitting it up into two modules. Um, so make sure you guys give yourself enough time to really let this material sink in. Okay. So in this video, we're going to talk about an introduction to waves. So up until this point, um, here's the atom as we know it. Uh, we've got this uh, very dense region called the nucleus. Um, inside the nucleus, we've got protons and neutrons, um, and that houses pretty much the entire mass of our atom. And then scattered outside the nucleus, we've got this, what we've called an electron cloud. What we're going to find out in the next series of videos is that electron cloud is it's a little bit more complex than just a cloud. Um, those electrons are out there. Um, but they happen to be in very um, distinctive locations, um, and it's very strategically set up. So there's a very complicated cloud, if you will. Before we can get to that complex cloud, we're going to have to get some skills, some understanding. Um, so that's what this first video is going to be about, is just introducing ourselves to waves, um, and then we're going to connect that to electrons. So the behavior of very small particles, this is why we're going to talk about what we're going to talk about. Electrons are incredibly tiny pieces of matter. Um, the number of electrons in a single speck of dust is higher than the number of people that have ever lived on the Earth. Um, so electrons are unfathomably small. Um, because they live in this world that we know nothing about, um, we're finding out that they act in very peculiar and different ways. They act in ways um, that matter that we can observe don't act. They follow different rules. Um, so that's what this chapter is about, is setting up those rules. Much of the behavior of an atom is determined by these electrons. So even though electrons' behavior is different, um, all of the observations that we make about atoms are dictated by the electron. So we're going to spend an entire chapter learning about the electron, and then the rest of general chemistry this semester and next um, will be learning how those electrons dictate the properties we observe. It explains the manner um, in which electrons exist and behave as atoms. So um, we will have a little bit of an understanding of where they exist, electrons, um, and how they behave in atoms. Um, but as much as we know, there's still so much that is unknown about the electron. And then electrons are going to predict atomic properties that are directly related to the behavior of atoms. So we're going to start to talk about properties. Um, the periodic table is very periodic, same um, set of uh, rules that repeats over and over again, and that has to do with the number of electrons and how they're arranged. Um, so we're going to get start to see those properties um, and how they're related to the atom. So just like I opened up chapter one with, uh, this textbook is all about structure determines properties. So we're getting to know the electron, uh, which will help us understand structure and will ultimately help us understand properties. So... Turns out electrons and light have a lot in common. <laughs> so we're going to learn a little bit about light first, um, and then connect that to electrons. So light is not matter. Um, light is an electromagnetic radiation or an electromagnetic wave propagating out. 
So where do we get this term electromagnetic? Uh, we got an electric field here that's going up and down in blue. We've got a magnetic field that's going left and right in red. Um, and those are going to propagate out uh, mutually perpendicular. So this one's up and down, this one's left and right. They're going to remain at those angles um, and propagate out as such. So light is actually made up of two different types of um, fields or waves. So light travels in the form of a wave. Uh, in a vacuum, it travels at a constant speed. Um, lots of chemistry textbooks and chemistry courses will now dive into a whole section on calculating frequency and wavelength and all kinds of stuff. Um, I do not require that in my class, so speed of light is here on the screen. We're actually not going to use it anymore. Um, other courses may ask you to use it, though. So properties of waves. If light travels in the form of a wave, let's have a better understanding of a wave. Um, so here's some terminology that you're going to need to know. So a wave length is the distance from peak to peak or trough to trough um, or where it crosses the line going up and crosses the line going up again. Um, so it doesn't really matter what two places on the um, wave you choose to look at. It just has to be like identical positions, peak, peak or trough, trough. So the wavelength is going to be the distance between those two places. Um, bigger wavelength, the distance is going to be longer. Shorter wavelength, the distance is going to be shorter. Pretty easy. Amplitude is the height of the wave. Um, amplitude tells us about intensity. Um, so if you've heard probably with sound waves, you've heard about amplifiers, right? Um, so an amplifier would increase the um, height of this wave, which would make it louder. If we're talking about um, light, increasing the amplitude would make it brighter, more intense light. Um, so amplitude is the height of the wave. And then also um, one property we need to talk about but is not on this slide is frequency. So frequency is the number of cycles that passes like a point. Um, so if I were to put my little red dot right here um, and I maybe started a stopwatch for 30 seconds, frequency would be the number of wave lengths or wave cycles that passes that point during those 30 seconds. So that's what frequency is going to be. Um, frequency and wavelength are um, connected. Um, we'll look at that in just a second. Here what we see is just different sizes of waves. Um, so this first one would have a longer wavelength. The bottom one would have a really short wavelength. Um, so comparing those two. Here we're comparing amplitudes. So the wavelengths are the same. This one is a taller wave, so higher amplitude, lower wave, shorter amplitude. Um, so this might be a bright light and this might be a really dim light. Um, so that's the difference there. And then thinking about frequency, so if this dotted line right here was my observation point, um, if I allowed the three of these lines to pass my um, observation point, um, I would see just a few of the top one go through. Maybe I think it says three cycles would go through in that given amount of time. Here, this one, we'd see more cycles go through. So maybe six cycles would go through. Um, and the last one, we may see 12 cycles go through. So higher frequency, more cycles going through. Lower frequency, less cycles going through. Okay. So as I suggested, wavelength and frequency are related. Um, so something that has oops, something that has a bigger wavelength, so large wavelength, is going to result in a lower frequency. Not as many cycles are going to go by. And if we have something that has a short wavelength, okay. ooh, that one got funky. Um, if we have something that has a small wavelength, this one would have a much higher frequency. We are also later on going to talk about energy, so I do want to go ahead and address it on this slide so you've at least seen it. Um, 
So if I talk about the energy of a wave, it is directly related to frequency. Um, so if something has a high frequency, it's going to be a more high energy wave. Um, so shorter wavelength, higher frequency, higher energy. Um, and conversely, if it's got a huge long wavelength, um, it's going to have a lower frequency and also a lower energy. Okay. If you're looking for a specific example to help this sink in, um, you can think about radio waves. So those have a wavelength of like meters between peaks. Um, and we use radio waves to transmit over long distances. Not very high energy wave, right? Um, you don't worry about the radio waves coming through your car and causing any biological damage, right? Uh, gamma waves, on the other hand, teeny tiny little wavelength, super small wavelength. And we worry about gamma rays causing biological damage. We don't want to be exposed to those. Um, X-rays are also very small wavelengths. Um, so we have to um, really be careful the amount of um, X-rays that we are um, exposed to because it could cause biological damage if we expose ourselves to too many. Um, so big wavelengths, low frequency, low energy, not going to hurt us. Um, teeny tiny wavelength, high frequency, high energy could cause some biological damage. So here's an example of a chart, some of the things that I was talking about. Um, so you can kind of familiarize yourself with this chart and it'll help some of the things sink in. Um, so like I said, up here, very long wavelengths, um, much lower in energy. Up here, we see teeny tiny wavelengths, and we've got a much higher energy. Um, here we've got our little visible light. Um, so we think about this whole electromagnetic spectrum that, we, um, that exists. Just a little sliver of it is the electromagnetic spectrum that we can see with our eyes. Um, it's pretty phenomenal the things that our eyes um, can do and see with such a small little fraction here in the middle. So that is your introduction to waves, some of the properties of waves. Um, in the coming videos, we're going to talk about application of those properties to so talk about different things that waves can do and things that waves can tell us. Hope you guys found this helpful.